get into the word, I want to um, pray over us before we go into it. God, we thank you for your word brings us life. It's your word that guides us and directs us. So, God, we pray that our hearts will be open. Lord, that you would show us that you would illuminate more of who you are into our hearts, into our lives. God, we thank you for what you're going to do in this time. And we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God. All right, our subject today, it might not be grammatically correct, so if you're an English teacher, don't, you know, don't, don't at me. Um, but today our subject is life be life in. Life be life in. Can anybody, has anybody lived long enough on this earth to attest to the fact that life be life in? Oh, yes, I got, I'm, in a good, I'm in good company. I'm in good company. Y'all, you know, things that the old people used to say, now you get, like when it rains, it pours. Y'all remember those phrases? You're like, what y'all talking about? Now you get it? Mm-hmm. When it rains, it pours. And uh, if it ain't one thing, Lord have mercy. How many have long, lived long enough to, to know that? If it ain't one thing, the, you know who is the ultimate hater? I was talking to my son about this. That light on your car dashboard. When, when life is going great, bills are paid, here it come. Check engine light. This little light of mine, Lord have mercy. The ultimate hater is that, yeah. That's kind of how life goes. Life just kind of lifes. It just happens. But I do want to delineate some of our lifing things because I feel like a lot of us deal with first world problems as opposed to real world problems. Y'all know what I'm talking about? First world problems as we live in America and not in a third world country. But, you know, things that make us mad like slow internet access or poor cell phone coverage or your phone battery is dying and you got low battery anxiety. The TV remote ain't working and you just steady hitting it. <laughs> battery gone. Uh, you missing an AirPod. Come on. These are the things that really mess up our day. You don't wanna use the self checkout. You determined to use a real person. If you don't go to that, how many people work out and you forget your headphones? That's the ultimate. That's the worst workout ever. Got to listen to the, 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 the atmosphere music. Uh, feeling like there's nothing to eat when there's a lot of food in the fridge. <laughs> I don't feel like cooking. I just went grocery shopping. I'm still going to Uber eat. Um, being left on, hold, left on hold when you're placing a call. Having no Wi-Fi having a bad phone signal, waiting to log in, wanting to log in into your account, but you can't find your password, can't remember it, you knew it was something, it ain't popping up, it, you gotta, this whole thing. First world problems, your online delivery is late. Not being able to, <laughs> not being able to fast forward your live TV. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, man, y'all just mad. Wardrobe full of clothes, yet nothing to wear. Can't put nothing together. Just can't. These are all first world problems. But can you admit that these are the things that can tick you off and set you off on a bad day sometimes and gets us into complaining and gets us into saying like, oh, here we go again. As opposed to real life problems. Real life. Like the death of a loved one, right? Financial crisis, can't find a job, lack of employment, transportation issues, health challenges, relationship issues, threats of homelessness. Well, I feel like we're always under that threat living in the Bay Area. Abuse or violence or even being robbed, accidents, addictions. These are all real life problems. Things that are happening to us in real time. This is what happens when life is lifing. Anybody been there before? 
And especially, it's especially hard when these times feel like suffering. Suffering is a, is, an, is a different word because suffering is the state of undergoing pain and distress and hardships continually. Like there's no let up. Have you ever felt like that? I just need a break sometimes. Yeah. Just one thing after another, after another, and after a phone call, and after, am I in the right place? Yeah. Just things just keep happening. Yeah. It's suffering. We feel like we're suffering. And in these times, that's when most people have a major faith crisis. Yeah. They have times of reckoning with God. It's called the dark night of the soul. When you really try to figure out what is going on. God, why is this happening? And then we start questioning the existence of God. Does God even exist? Or we become mad or offended with God. God, I ain't talking to you. I ain't going to pray. I'm going to go to church, but I'm just going to sit there. Ain't doing nothing. Because you didn't answer my prayer. Right? Or we fall into um, destructive behavior, trying to cope, trying to get, you know, trying to get our footing together, trying to find happiness, trying to find some source of peace. And many just walk away from the church altogether. Anybody know people or have been that person? Come on, we had, it's a free, safe environment. We walked away from church. And, and I'm concerned because. Um, I believe this is one thing that we have lost in our modern Western iteration of church. One thing that we have lost that the early church had is the concept of suffering well. The early church had it. Somewhere over these 2,000 years, we've lost the ability to suffer well. I wonder if the early church looks at us like people from who grew up in the 70s. Anybody grew up in the 70s? Anybody grew up in the 60s? Anybody? Yeah. I wonder if the early church looks at us like us who just raised our hands, how we look at this new generation. Like that they're not tough enough. You ever see like this new generation is soft? Because we went through it. They did not. We, you had to be tough to be raised in the 70s, in the 60s. You had to be tough. We didn't have no seatbelts. Nobody cared. Your mama hand was the seatbelt. We rode in the back of pickup trucks. Laughing and giggling down the city. Going over bumps. Look, you know, I was like, it was fun. They didn't care about us. Did you know, remember how our swings, how our playgrounds used to look? Hot metal, dangerous carousels. They didn't care about us. You had to be tough. Oh, yeah. It was before regulations, yeah. before, um, before you could uh, be politically correct. Right. You get roasted on all kind of things. Nobody cared. Toughen up, kid. <laughs> I wonder if the early church looks at us like that. Like, y'all soft. Y'all know what we went through? Y'all yeah. know what we did? <laughs> and we are kind of um, not able to handle... Uh, things because we don't, we don't want to be inconvenienced. Many in the early church were persecuted. They were tortured. They were martyred. They died for the faith. And yet, we can't hardly be inconvenienced. Hardly, barely. And we'll do it, but we're going to complain the whole time, right? So let's just reinstate the facts. Life is going to life. Because this is the state of our human existence. Do you all agree? Yes. The, the Bible says the, uh, it rains on the just as well as the unjust. Yes. That's just a bad things happen to good people. Yes. This is a fact. This is our human existence. This is where we are. This is how what happens after the fall. Life, lives. Life, lives with everyone. No matter if you're good, you're bad, you're good, you're up, down. Life happens. Have you ever, everybody agree with that? We're all on the same logical pace. But what if I told you it was a way to handle hard better? Handle hard better. I don't know if anybody follows uh, women's basketball, but there's a coach called Kara Lawson. She coaches for Duke. 
and she had this amazing speech. You could go back and look at it on YouTube to her, to her team. And she was talking about how to handle hard better. Like when you go through things, when you go through things, there's a, there's a way to handle hard better without falling apart, yes. without retreating, without going and doing this. It's a really great speech. And I think this is the same thing that Paul was saying to the past, in the passage we're going to read uh, in Romans. He was giving them motivation on how to handle hard better. And I think there's some keys that we could take away from there. Uh, if the verse we're um, coming from today is in Romans. Romans 5, 1 through 5. It's a really powerful verse. I'm so excited that we get to um, explore this together. Romans 5, 1 through 5. It's coming. All right. It says, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, we rejoice in our sufferings. Knowing that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. What a beautiful verse. Yes, come on, clap for the word of God. This We could read that and I say, good night, thank you, have a good day. There's, no, there's nothing really else to say. This is the key when life is going life, the Holy Spirit is the key. We are in Pentecost. We're in the Pentecostal season. And we have been talking a lot about the Holy Spirit. And contrary to popular belief, the Holy Spirit is not just for goosebumps, right? The Holy Spirit is not just for expressiveness, although I'm here for it all. I want the goosebumps. I want the express. I want to y'all gonna see me run three laps one time and just don't say nothing when I do just move out the way because I'm gonna run I want to express when something uh, God is a spirit and when you feel something it causes you to be expressive but the Holy Spirit is just not limited to that the Holy Spirit is just not limited to your prayer language we do believe in speaking in tongues here. We do believe in having a, a prayer language that's just between you and God, that you can speak uh, in, a, in a way that um, it's between you and God and the devil can't do nothing with it, right? That's what, um, but the Holy Spirit is way more than that. And at this moment, I feel like I'm like your HR manager when you started a new job, right? <laughs> this is how I feel in this moment. I'm here to give you your benefits package. Because you've been walking around with unused benefits, sick and coughing. If you don't go to Kaiser, use this card and go to Kaiser. Like, you, your back messed up. You got chiropractic services. Won't you go, right? This is how it is with the Holy Spirit. We have benefits. We have things available to us in the Spirit. And yet we walk around like we don't. We have all these unused, untapped resources. So I feel like I'm like, hi, welcome. Here's your package. This is what you get when you engage the Holy Spirit in your life. When we don't have to have unused benefits, you can engage into what God has for you. So here's our first little benefit package, your perk. And I want, you, we, I want us just to walk through this verse uh, in um, Romans 5, 1 and 2. I want you to see that you can only suffer well once you experience the love of God. I want you to take that in because it's easy to throw this verse out and say like, hey, you can suffer well. Kind of. There's a caveat to this. It's only to those who believe. It's only for those who are engaged in their, in their relationship with God. And it's only for those who have encountered the love of God. You know what I mean? Do you know why the early church died and now why they were martyred? It wasn't just because they came to church, at, you know, whenever they felt like it, a periodical Sunday, had a checklist. No, they really encountered Jesus. 
they really met him. They really felt the love of God. They really had a testimony like, you can't tell me nothing about God. I know that I know that I know that I know that God is real. You're not willing to give your life for something you're not really convinced about. Something that you just kind of do on the side. These people had an encounter. So if you are going to suffer well, look at verse 1. It says, therefore... Since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God. This is such a loaded verse. I wish I had all the time in the world because I'm such a Bible nerd. And we could talk all about how before Jesus, we did not have peace with God. The priest and all the people had to do sacrifices. And we would have no animals left if we stayed up under that system. Because we keep messing up, keep messing up, keep messing up. And God's like, I love y'all, but because of sin, I can't. Oh, it's because I'm holy. I'm all the way other. I can't really be with you. And all I want to do is be with you. I've created you for fellowship, but sin's in the way. So Jesus comes and gives us peace with God through his blood. It's such a good news. It's so good that Jesus would die for us to take our place. And because he did that, we now have peace with God. That should have been five shouts, but that's okay. We're going to keep going. Through him, we also obtain access by faith into into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of God. We have access now. Anybody ever had a backstage pass? I've never had one. Anybody? Can y'all hook me up? Y'all know people. Backstage, you have backstage pass? Man, VIP. You out there, you get to hang out. You get to talk to the artists. Have, you know, you just chilling out. That's access. So God has given, Jesus has given us access to God the Father. Y'all don't understand how huge that is. How everyone in the Old Testament wished they were in your shoes. I don't got to go to the temple. I don't have to do all these things. I can just talk directly to God. This is our benefit package. You have access to God. But you can only suffer well once you've experienced that. When you are convinced, Paul said, I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons, nothing can separate me from the love of God. You got to have an anchor in your soul. Come what may, highs, lows, people come, people go, I don't care. I know God for myself. I know God. There's nothing you can do to make me doubt him because I've met him. I talk to God. I have this encounter with God. This is how you suffer well. The the next thing I want to talk about is we need to experience God's love through the Holy Spirit in order to endure our trials. See, this is the problem. We've been trying to go through all of our hard times on our own strength and our own energy, our own ingenuity. Okay, let me just make a phone call. Let me just call somebody. Okay, let me just make some moves. Let me just hustle a little bit more. Let me just do this real quick. Okay, let me just talk to them, and then I'll talk. We be, ooh, we try to work it out. Or we trying to hold everybody in your life up. You tell everybody come to you for help and advice. Your phone is ringing constantly. You don't even got a time for yourself. You just giving out, giving out, giving out. We're trying to do it all on our own. And we get tired and worn out and burnt out. And that's when we be like, you know what? This guy thinks not working. I'm just going to go back to my. Which when we go back to stuff, it still didn't work. So I don't know where we be going. But <laughs> the Holy Spirit, as Pastor Mike has been preach- preaching to us, gives us power to witness. Not just power to shout, although I'm here for it. But power to witness, power to show up in your everyday life, power to show up at work. How you showing up at work? Power to show up at home with the people who love you the most. Power to be a witness. Therefore, the Holy Spirit 
causes us to be a sign and a wonder to those who are around us. Do you all follow in my line of, of, of reasoning? Because rejoice in suffering is counterintuitive. Who's rejoicing in suffering? Who's happy because things are going bad? Who's like, yes, they repoed my car. <laughs> like this is, but this is the thing. That's a, that's a misconception because we're not rejoicing because of it. We're rejoicing, we're rejoicing in it. Yeah. It's a difference. Yeah. Uh -huh. You're rejoicing not because things are going bad. That's superficial. I would be concerned. We have mental health experts in here. <laughs> If you just walked around, oh, everything's fine. My favorite comic strip, I don't know if anybody, with the, the, with the dog and the fire. Everything's fine. I would be concerned if you're just like overly, you know, not locked into what's going on, right? But there's, a, there's something that having the reality, okay, yeah, I see what's going on. Things are falling apart. <laughs> but yet to be able to rejoice that's other levels. Rejoice. Why would you rejoice in that? It got to be that you have tapped into another source. That you have tapped into another source of abundance, another source of joy, another source of peace. You then become a sign and a wonder to those around you. How in the world are you smiling right now? Why you didn't cuss them out? Because if it was me, you know, they, if it was me, you better than me, because how? How are you still showing up? How are you coming to work every day? How you will really cause people to be like, I don't understand, because I don't have, what is it that you have that I don't have? This is the thing that the world can't comprehend, but a lot of times there's no difference between us and them. We complain more than them sometimes. Riff raff on the job, talking about folk. Uh -huh. God said, I'm sorry, I'm going all down the lanes, but I'm just going to be obedient to what God has said. So y'all could just look at me crazy. It's okay. But sometimes it's not, we're not, there's no difference. There's no delineation between us who are walking in the power of the Holy Spirit and those who don't have that. And that's where God wants to use us to be a sign and a wonder. Not saying that life, hey, we go through our times, we have our times of, of doubt and fear and things that are going, but it's just, it's just it's a small window. It's a small window for that. And then we start to realize who we are. Okay, things are bad right now, but I have a hope. I have a hope. The hope is a person, not things. Hope is a person. So um, in these verses, Paul rolls out a set of, of, of processes. Process. Everybody say process. process. We don't like the process. We don't want the process. We, we live in a microwave. Just give it to me. Just show me where it is. I don't want to make it. I don't want to do this. Just, I just Amazon it. I don't care. Right? We don't really like process. But there's something so valuable about processes. And we want to skip it. And God's like, no, come on back in here. Because look at verse 3 and 4 of Romans 5. It's so good. It says, um, so we're almost there, verse 3 and 4. Not only that, y'all with me, y'all with me? Verse 3 and 4. We processing. We processing. <laughs> Y'all throw up verse 3 and 4 for me. Process, process, process. We almost there. There it is. Oh, it was a nice transition, too. <laughs> Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering, here we go, produces endurance. Oh, we got to be able to, to, to last a long time uh -huh. to go through something. We don't want to go through nothing. We just want it to be over. But in this process of suffering, something 
gets produced in you. You're able to last. You're able to go to distance. You don't give up as much. You know, the people who just quit at every, oh, well, it's too hard, never mind. We like a little kid with a ball, just take their ball and go home. That's how we feel in the spirit. Oh, well, they ain't, I'm going to another church. Right? This will give you endurance. Somebody say endurance. And then once you have endurance, you'll, you'll then de develop character. Character. Character is who you are when nobody else is looking. Character is who you are, how you walk in integrity. How you would act if you didn't know a camera was on you. Could you get away with it or not? How do you treat people? How do you treat the waiters? How do you treat the baristas? Character. How do you treat your boss? Or the people who are under you? So when you have this endurance, that endurance is then going to work into you a character development. After character development, it's going to produce hope. We are living in an age of hopelessness. But you just can't come to the altar and I pray over you and be like, receive hope. Hope is a process. In order to get hope, you got to know somebody. You got to go through some things. You got to know God. Hope is only coming from God. Like, okay, all this is going crazy, but I know the one. I know the one. I know the one. All right. And it says, um, and hope does not put us to shame. We don't have to be shame. Hope, hope not going to do you shady. Hope not going to have you out here looking crazy. Hope not going to make you. You cannot beat hope. You, as a matter of fact, hopeful people get on people's nerves. <laughs> don't they? Like, man, it's going to be a, nah, it's going to be a rainy day. You know, it might be a chance of sun. <laughs> like, that person that's always opposite. Like, it goes because we want to, like, we want misery loves company. But that one hopeful person, I love that. Someone who moves in the opposite spirit. Take that with you on your job. Move in the opposite spirit. Everybody doing this, oh, well, well, we're going to do this. Everybody complaining, well, we're going to find gratitude. Move in the opposite spirit. Hope. And it has been poured into our hearts. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. You have to get this. You have benefits in the Holy Spirit. You have benefits. When you're going through hard times, when life is life, and you have a hope, you have a hope. You have a benefit. You have help. Ain't no need for us to be walking around with our heads dragging down, even though the weight and the gravity of it does fall on us sometimes. But after a while, you got you to gotta shake yourself and say, I know the one. I know the one. Um, really quickly, we're going to just run through this. Suffering then becomes weight training for your soul. I'll say it again. Suffering becomes weight training for your soul. Anybody ever did weight training before? Any athletes? Any non? Yeah, yeah she said, uh, say it again. It hurt. Anybody ever did resistance training, the, the bands or the, remember those things, right? Yeah, if you're in rehab, you have to do the whole things. I just want you to know suffering, and we're usually mad at God for allowing suffering, but I just like to point out that God is an excellent recycler. God recycles. God upcycles. God does all the things. There's nothing that goes to waste in your life. Nothing. God uses it all. The good, the bad, the indifferent. It's all working together for the good of those who love God. That's your caveat. Only those who love God. It don't apply to other people. He's working it out. Every bit. Somebody say every bit. Every bit of my life, God is going to use it. Nothing's lost in God. Nothing. Nothing's wasted. He wastes nothing. He will use even the worst times in your life to do something amazing. What a God we serve. What a God we serve. 
Check it out. Look, I, if you don't believe me, there's other verses that will back this up. I'm going to go through it real quick. James 1, because I like to give receipts for what I'm saying. James 1, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops what? Yes. Perseverance or endurance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and lacking nothing. You know, that's the goal is for us to be mature in our Christian faith. I think if we go to most churches, it's still like a daycare. It's a baby daycare. It's a spiritual baby daycare. We're still handing out bottles and pacifiers. People still having tantrums, and they won't they weigh. And God's not listening. It's a whole we. It's a whole kindergarten situation in our churches where the goal is when we go through these things, they're maturing us. It's making us wiser. It's making us respond better. We're becoming better versions of ourselves. We're ever evolving in God. We never tap out. So consider it joy. I love it. They keep telling us to be happy about it. I'm like, all right. Count it joy. Rejoice. Okay. But if you have this perspective, perhaps we could. Last, next verse, uh, First Peter. Here's the uh, other verse of my receipts. In this, greatly rejoice. <laughs> it's a, I'm sensing a theme. Yes, yes, yes. Though now for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. How many people have had all kinds of trials? All kinds of stuff. You'd be like, now where'd that come from? <laughs> These things have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes, even refined by fire, may prove genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Yeah. So you telling me that my faith, the more I'm doing resistance training, and the more I'm going, when I'm suffering, it's actually building something more precious than gold in my heart. And God's refining it. God has taken out all the impurities, making, you know, pure gold is worth more than, you know, the dirt, the gold you just find, find in the ground. God takes us through a process and refines us, refines us. See it different. See your suffering different. Suffer well. Handle hard better because we have a hope. It's doing something on the inside of us. It's doing something. So in conclusion, we have help available. Do you hear me? You don't have to do it alone. We have help. John uh, 15, 26 says, but when the helper comes, whom I send to you, from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all didn't see it. Uh, John, John, John 15. John 15. Y'all y'all back there, y'all hear me? John 15. There it is. It's coming, it's coming. John 15. There it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you. John 15 says, But when the Helper comes, whom I send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. Saints, you got help. You don't got to do it alone. You don't have to, when you go through hard times, you got a benefit. You got a perk. You got something in the world that people in the world don't have. You have help. You have the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit resides in you for this reason. Life be life in. But the helper be helping. God be guiding. God be guiding. Last thing. I'm going to Hebrews. That's the last verse. The only way we're going to get through our hard times is that we're going to do it together. We're going to do it. We got to do it in community. We can't do it in isolation. We got to do it together. We got to go through together. We got to come, we got to come as, a, as a group. And I love this last verse. We're in Hebrews 10, 
and it's so important, this is what I want to leave you with. Your confession and community is how we're going to suffer well. Your, our confession and our community. It says, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. Stop right there. Yeah. This is what I was talking about. With, this only applies to people who really know God and have an encounter with God. No matter what you are going through in life, it's so important to hold on to your confession yeah. that God is good. God loves me. Yes. This is all going to work out. Yes. God is a healer. Yes. God is a deliverer. Hold it to your confession. Everything looks crazy, but God is a provider. Yes. Everything is all chaotic, but God is the prince of peace. Yes. God is a way out of no way. God is the way maker. God, hold it to your confession. What are you confessing when you're going through hard times? Yes. Here we go again. Always the same old thing. No, 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 no. Hold to your confession. The old, the um, early church, they would hold to their confession until the moment they died in martyrdom. In the Roman Empire, they all they wanted them to say is that Caesar is Lord. Just say it. Say Caesar is Lord, and we'll let you go. Or we could throw you into the lion's pit. You know, it's whatever. Whatever you want to do. And they would, to their dying breath, hold to their confession. Jesus is Lord. Because I know him. Yes. That's the key, because I know him. So hold to your confession. Verse 24, let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some after COVID. <laughs> That's the Tanisha paraphrase. <laughs> but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. In order to suffer well, we're going to have to hold to our confession and we have to do it in community. Amen? Amen? This is what we're here for. And you know, we don't want just, you to just come here and then check out and like I did the thing. Like, this is why we need one another. So, perhaps God is building resilience in us. Perhaps God is Developing some stick to itiveness inside of us. Perhaps God doesn't want us to quit so easy. Sometimes you gotta tough it out. Again, athletes in here, y'all know what it means to keep going, keep doing suicides, keep doing wall sits, do one more lap, even though your legs are dead. It builds something in you. Coaches know that. Okay, you tired. You ain't going to die. You'll be all right. <laughs> Developing stick to -itiveness. And then I would also like to remind everyone, I say this often, but we love the fruit of the Spirit. Yes, Lord, fill me with the fruit. I need it all. But this that one little one that we skip over. What is it, Lauren? It's the fruit of the Spirit. Long, long uh, suffering. It's a fruit of the spirit. It's a pro. It's what the spirit cultivates inside of you when you're filled. You're able to go through hard stuff with peace, with joy. Not joy. You, not joy. You got to go buy. Joy. You got to go smoke. Joy. You got to go drink. There's a joy that's available to you. There's a peace that passes all understanding. Y'all, I've experienced it. I've been through adverse, adverse times that they make no sense at all. Why I had joy. It was puzzling. What is going on? I should be mad. I should be in jail right now. It's the peace of God. So let's go ahead and stand to our feet. God, help us. We want to suffer well. If we're going to life, if life is going to life, come on, deductive reasoning. If we're all going to go through, no matter how good, how, how bad, how, how, you, how good you try, or we're going to go through in life. Wouldn't it make sense to do it well? We have some reflective questions, and I'll get out the way. And this is something I want you to ask yourself. In light of your current circumstance, 
Whatever you're going through right now, what's bothering you? The thing you brought to the altar. What characteristic might God be growing in you through this circumstance? I want you to start and think about that. What is God trying to do? What is God up to? Sometimes we're so busy pointing to the other person, and they did it, and they, and they. Well, God's like, well, maybe I'm trying to develop some more patience in you. Maybe I'm trying to give you a deeper love. Maybe I want to be your source of joy. Maybe I want to show you a whole different aspect of me that you've never seen. How would you know God was a provider if you didn't have a need? How would you know God was a healer if you didn't need to be healed? God, maybe you're revealing something new about yourself in this situation. Then we will, we're just going to close this time with a prayer. A prayer. And I, I want to invite you to pray a prayer and invite the Holy Spirit's help into your hardship right now. So let's just take a moment. You do business with God. Invite God into the situation. Say, Holy Spirit, I need your help. I tried to do it on my own so many times. I keep messing up. I'm sorry. I repent. I'm sorry for taking matters in my own hands. I need your help. My only the desperate people can say this. God, I need your help. I invite you into the situation. Thank you for my benefits. Hallelujah. I just feel an overwhelming peace coming upon this place right now. In Jesus' name. Come on, if you feel that, come on, lift your hands. If you feel a peace coming over you, God, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Help us to handle heart better, Lord. Help us to suffer well through the power of your Holy Spirit. Use us, God, to be a sign and a wonder to those around us. They, they will ask, what do you have? What is on your life? How can, I get to, how can I get to know the same God? Because this is incredible. God, use us. We partner with you. Help us in these hard times. A lot of us are going through real life right now. Real hurt. Real anxiety. 